This is Camp Kennan. Hey, what's going on everybody? Kenan here, and we got some bonus videos coming at you from my good buddy, Sam Pascucci's. There he is, Florida Iguana and Tortoise Breeders. And today I figured, since we're here with Sam, he can help us out. Uh, some of you are always so interested in purchasing Aldabra tortoises. Well, Sam does sell them. And I figured a fun little video would be taking us through the various sizes sure. of the Aldabra. Because yeah. we know what they become, right? but very few of us see them as juveniles and or, well, there's no hatchlings in here. And you said earlier in the season you had how many babies? Uh, well, I'm up to 80 so far this year. Wow, that's so. incredible, man. So talk to me a little bit about, like, and you don't mind if I pick them no, up, I'll right? Go right ahead. All right, so here we have everybody, check it out. This is a young, that's not even a hatchling size. No, they not. come in as hatchlings. They come in, they're four inches. They're okay. six months old. And they grow about a quarter inch a month, sometimes even a little bit more. This guy's about five inches, so he's closer to nine, ten months old. And when you say they come in, these are animals that are farm raised in the Seychelles, right, correct? Right, right, right. We're actually. Um, uh, have worked along with a farm in the Seychelles for about the last 25 years. Awesome. We're actually the largest uh, importer of Aldabra tortoises. Wow, that's incredible. And, yeah. and guys, you know Nostradamus, uh, my, my uh, Aldabra tortoise, was actually an import from the Seychelles Islands. I got him back in 2004. And when talking about you know, these animals, these are not taken from the wild at all. These are, these are captive raised babies. Um, and they go to zoos and they go to private keepers right. like ourselves. Right. Um, so I find that the ones from the Seychelles are really well started, you know, that yeah, they really absolutely. do well. Those people know how to start a, start a tortoise. They've been doing it forever. It's, they're in their natural environment. They have their diet right and everything. So uh, they're, they're professionals getting those guys going from, uh, from a hatchling up to, uh, up, up to four inches. So what, you know, and, and I'm going to play, I'm going to play silly here, but I might learn something, you know, because you know, how, how many years have you been doing this? You said 20, 30, 35 years, 35 years. Yeah. Okay. So talk to us about, you know, getting these animals through the, the, what some people consider is like a delicate phase, the hatchling tortoise, you know, what do you have to do different for an Aldabra? Is it pretty much the same care if you were dealing with a sulcata? You know, it, it is pretty much the same care. Um, you, I, I think you just have to really pay attention. You have to know, uh, you know, what what the diet is, what the temperature is, and and you have to understand that animal and provide that environment, and then you can raise a nice animal. Uh, yep. The Aldabras, you know, are a very social animal, so sometimes I have problems where, you know, maybe someone doesn't doesn't adapt well, or someone is a little bit shy, and people always want to know what they can do. And one of the things they can do is actually get a second Aldabra. Second Aldabra really stimulates that first Aldabra because there's, there's competition for food, there's competition, uh, 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 it, it, they stimulate activity and they, right. they walk around. So that's kind of their natural environment because they, they kind of hang out together. That's where they come from, the Seychelles. If you look at the videos, all of those animals are together. Right. So when you have animals together, they, they really do much better. Now, it's not to say that a single animal wouldn't do well but because, because they do. I'm just saying that I see much better results, I see better growth rates, and I see happier animals when you have actually animals that are done. You know, it's, it's a funny two, thing three. because, you know, both you and I have sold animals before, and, you know, we sell our offspring, and I get people asking me, is it, is it better to get one or, or two tortoises? Yeah. And I always say this, um, you know, the, without sounding like a salesperson, yeah, I said, well, that's well the problem. right, I said, so I say, look, I wouldn't want to go through life alone without another one of my kind. Right. Right. So because you only see half of an animal's behavior yes, exactly. if it's if it's, you know, isolated. Right. But like you said, now you're seeing competition for food. Now you're seeing, you know, even if you get lucky and you get a male and a female, you're going to see some breeding behavior. You're going to see some just, you know, communication with the head bobs and just right. that believe me, animals are communicating with each other right. just in ways we don't know. Right. And then the other reason I say to people why it's fun to get a second animal is because you know you're going to love them. Uh, and the, the big problem is you'll get an Aldabra, okay? And it's a, it's a costly endeavor. Yes. Um, they're not, you know, a $50 tortoise. You know, these animals are close to $3,000, $3,500. Um, so if you get one and it starts to grow, now you got to find one that is the exactly. same size. Right. So now so that you end up paying a lot more money. Yes. It's always better to right. get two if you can afford it, our, uh, to raise them up together. Our it's much nicer. Our run from 1995 to 2495. Wow. 
Okay, it's a hatchling animal. That's incredible. Well, uh, well we, we call them hatchlings, but they're but they're it's a young animal. It's a hatchling. It's it's six months old. Gotcha. Okay. And they run from 1995 to 2495. And just like you said, you take a look at some of these other animals. They're between eight and ten inches, and they run about 3200 to about 3900. Gotcha. Now I do have a lot of people that will actually opt to take a bigger animal, take an eight inch or a ten inch animal, because. They, they want something that's really well started. They want something that they can leave outside. Gotcha. They, they want something that that they don't have to pay as much attention to or to be as, as afraid. Maybe they're a first time Aldabra buyer, and so they're looking for an animal that, that's, that's, that's much better started. And you've raised animals from, from this. From, hatchlings. from this. From hatchlings. Let's take a walk. Yeah. Let's okay. go for a walk. We're going to go for a walk right through Sam's courtyard here, and we're going to show you. Um, some animals that he's raised up uh, so you can really see the amount of care and the amount of dedication Sam puts into his animals. It's really impressive. Um, Sam's a few years older than me. Um, I have animals that I purchased, you know, Socrates and Nostradamus. Don't mind the uh, noise here. It's just some uh, air conditioning, but I have yet to attain the maturity that he has. So get ready. You ready for this? How about it, folks? There is an adult Aldabra tortoise. Uh, it is, you know, it's kind of one of those situations where um, some islands of the Galapagos will have tortoises that get bigger than the Aldabra. But when do you say Aldabs get just massive, generally? Yes. Like they, the males just get huge. Yes, and it's, and it's an individual thing. Sometimes, you know, I think people sometimes pay too much attention to what the species is and then say, well, this animal is if this animal is friendly, this animal is not friendly, this animal is this size, this animal is that size. But sometimes you have to look at, indi at differences in individuals. I mean, you know, you have, you have people like uh, Shaquille O'Neal and, and you have yeah. people that, you know, that, that are small. So there's yeah. a really big difference. And then you have friendly people like you and I, and then you got some people that don't like to talk so much. Right. Right. Same thing with animals. So it's the same thing with animals. Uh, the, I'm going to show you some of the different animals I raised. He's, uh, I raised him from that hatchling we saw. He's 29 years old. His name is Oliver. He's a great tortoise. So this this is the kind of tortoise he follows me around the backyard. I've got to be careful because if I take a step ladder out there, or I take a drill, I want to do something. He's over here. He's parking next to me. Ah. So sometimes I'm like I'm almost going to fall over him, or he's going to knock the ladder down. I'd be very careful because he'd follow me around the backyard, just wow. like, just like a dog. Yeah. Look at this. He's certainly motivated by bananas. That's yeah, the, sure. That's the truth. Yeah. But you know, and it's funny because years ago when I first got my uh, I. I had um, two Aldabras, because I did, like you said, like we were just talking about, I purchased two. Sadly, one died of pneumonia, so I lost one. But, you know, with mine, uh, oh, here's just a quick little, I'll show you guys a little brown basilisk running there. <laughs> we're down south in Florida, there's a lot of cool stuff floating around. Uh, anyhow, um, I had one pass away from uh, pneumonia, but what I was told when I got the Aldabras back then, back in 2004, is that Oh, Aldabras are skittish, they're flighty, right. uh, they're shy, right. but you know what? Nostradamus is, that's my Aldab, yep. that is one of the friendliest tortoises I've yep. ever seen. Right, it's an individual thing. Gotcha, yeah. So, I mean, but, you know, we generalize, right? And, and, but you have to keep in mind that there, there are individuals. So, in generalizing, again, you know, I, I compare Galops and Aldabras like cats and dogs. Yeah, well, there's I'm, a Galop out there, yeah. And, and, and a lot of other people are doing the same thing now because, you know, uh, lots of more like cats. They're, they're kind of indifferent. They have less of a, a social structure than you see in Aldabras. They'll walk around by themselves. Uh, they don't follow each other around. Aldabras, you'll see them walk around in pairs. When they sleep, they'll sleep inside each other's... They put each other's head inside the shell and go to sleep. Wow. And so, you know, they really have that... The males don't fight. In the, uh, in the Galops, the males do fight. Huh. So the males are much tougher with the females for the galops, but in Aldabras, they're much more gentle. So they, they do have a better uh, social structure. Cool. Let's just take a look at some now, of the other ones you have. Now this or animal you is, we were talking about individualism. Yeah. So here, this animal, 28 years, 29 years old, 495 pounds. 495, 495 pounds. Wow. This is cool, man. Now, I like coming to visit Sam. We always get into a lot of conversations, <laughs> and uh, I get to hang out with some really big tortoises. Now, this is a galop. This is okay? a galop. Yeah, but you also raised this animal up uh, from from a hatchling, from a hatchling. as well, and wow. he's he's just slightly older, maybe about a year older than that guy there. This is this is Bernie, 
And you know, it's something like you said before, we're talking about people and raising and problems that they have. And some of the things you have to watch for, I see everybody talking about pyramiding on the, on the web. Right. So, sometimes it's not all about pyramiding. Yeah. Sometimes it's about the other health issues of the animals. Now, something that you notice, if you take a look, walk around here, if you look at his back legs, let's come back here and look at these. Oh, back. yes. Look, look at the way these legs are underneath the animal. Right. They're not, they're not splayed. They're pillars, they're underneath him. And that's because he's always grown up with topography. And in fact, the hill that we're sitting on here was created to give them topography to move around on. So something, a, a mistake that I see a lot of people making are they have too small an area to try to raise a giant tortoise. And what happens is they grow very fast. And because they grow very fast, they get heavy very quickly. When they get heavy very quickly, if, they, if they're not active and they're not moving around, they don't build that leg strength that they need. Right. And that really plays havoc as they get older because they can end up very quickly, they can end up six months or a year with leg problems. Right, and guys, you'll remember from some of my videos uh, with Darwin and Socrates, Darwin was raised on a flat 20 by 20 slate area. Right. Her legs were splayed. She's a 350 pound tortoise. Uh, you got to have strength and you got to have these elephantine legs. And like Sam said, these are columns uh, and they raise that bulk right up off the ground and they're directly underneath. So what I did was we built that water uh, structure, you know, and I put the animals out in a palmetto thicket. So they have to climb over logs. Exactly. They you have to pick up those legs. Exactly. And that's what they do. And sometimes another great thing for them also is they'll eat some of the vines that grow up right. on the palmetto, palmetto. So they have to stretch up right. with their legs. Right. Uh, but I've seen vast improvement. You can improve this. Yes. Don't just think because the animal is slightly splayed that right. that's how it's going to be the rest right. of its life. The correct husbandry is going to really right, make a big difference. Very adaptive. And you can make a big difference in hatchlings when you start to see animals that are not moving their legs right. We do what's called uh, water therapy, and we'll put them, we'll float them in the pool to give their ah, legs that exercise because stretch them out. they can't. They, if they're having a problem bearing the weight as it is, you've got to give them some water time, some pool time, where it gives them the, it creates that flexibility in their legs to help get you know to help. Uh, improve the situation with cool. splayed legs. That's really awesome, man. Well, the weather is turning against us. Yeah, we better get moving. Let's go see the rest of the Aldabs. That was just a quick stop off and discussion about some galops, but here are. Here again is a, a couple of males. I've raised these males as well. Wow. And you I see, can't wait. <laughs> you see, now, now these guys, they're only around 400. This guy's is uh, about 425, and this one over here is 405. Yet. They were all raised the same time with the other animal. But but notice how smooth their shells are. Right. The, the, shoot, the shells are smooth. Their legs are up underneath them. Very important. This is Cecil here. So you will see some of that problem with Aldabras as well, right? You can, you can have splayed out legs on an Aldabra as oh, well? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Look at that. So there you go, guys. We're telling you how to do it right. Take a look at his legs now. Let's do it from getting a juvenile Aldabra to an adult, you want to make sure they got the right exercise. Look at that. And look at look at the foot pad, how the entire foot pad is on the ground. Right. When you see animals with, with a lot of splayed legs, you'll notice that only the corner of the foot pad is actually on the ground. Right, and you know, another problem that I ran into with uh, Darwin and Socrates is because they had displayed legs, there was improper uh, erosion of the foot pad because yes. the whole foot right. is not on the ground. The other thing I had to do was I had to dremel down their nails yeah. because their nails some grow ones so will go long. Too short, and some yeah. of them are too long, so they and can't put their foot the under. Whole, yeah, exactly. There's a lot of fun. I've learned a lot from Sam. Um, the other key thing that I always like to talk about uh, while at Sam's spot uh, is this a female. This this is a female. Now now look at her shell as well. Yeah. She's hiding in the corner right now because I've just introduced the males back into the females pen, and so. They're, they're on her, so after a while, she's you know she's had enough of it. We'll actually separate them here in a little while to give the female a break. And that's something else that you may notice if you look. You see this? Yeah. What looks like that's, a patch? That's here. wearing. Yeah. No, this or, is this oh. is a fiberglass patch. See oh, it? look at that. That's a fiberglass patch. It, it's, there's nothing wrong with her shell. It's totally prophylactic. And what it does is the males have such big claws, and they're 500 pounds, 550 pounds, and they ride on that female. In a very short time, they can ride that female and they'll actually wear down her wear. carapace. But they'll dig their nails in there and they'll tear open the top surface of the shell and she'll end up with a real bad staph infection. So look so at that. She's already starting to hide in the corner. They've been out about a week. I'm already ready to take them out 
and separate the, the boys from the girls just because we don't want to stress the girls out. If the girls get stressed out, they're not going to lay. They're going to say, this is a bad environment. I'm getting overbred. I, I, I'm, I'm in danger of getting hurt. And they won't lay eggs. So it's important that the females are happy. Right. That's what, that's, that's what makes them procreate. Cool. And then finally, guys, we'll just have a look at this young one over here. Uh, this is about the same size as Nostradamus. Maybe he's a little bit bigger. But again, the proper diet is key. Looks like we got some Bermuda grass, uh, some hay here. Um, and it's just, you know, these animals are a high fiber, low fruit diet. I got to talk up. We got a helicopter. Got a helicopter flying overhead. So, hey, these are, these are bonus videos anyway, folks. So anyhow, we might have upset her. She's going to head back into her head. Oh, look at that. What would an animal of this size go for? Uh, she's 12,900. There you go. Get them while they're young, folks. Actually, 30 inches. Wow. Yeah, one second, I want to show you one other animal. Oh, let's do it, man. We, of course we have a second. Let's go see another animal of Sam's. Uh, just really fun video just to really get an idea of what's involved with Aldabra tortoises and, you know, also glops because essentially their care is similar, but I'm sure there are slight tweaks that you have to do between the species, by the way. There are the glops right there. And these animals are in a, you know, he opens up, this is like a common area. He allows them all grazing time. So, wow, look at us, man. Kind of fun, huh? He's got one more animal he wants to show us. We're going back into the depths of uh, the farm here. Yep, we got a little bit of everything, don't you? This is where they tore down the gate on the other day. Yeah, they're powerful, that's for sure. Yeah. Another one. There's a glop. Here's a guy that I wanted to show you. Oh, wow. We call him Tank. All right. Again, we're talking about these animals, these Aldabras, all being raised at the same time. Okay. But you have to get around here. It's too bad he's in the mud, but you get around to the back here. And look at this animal. He's just uh, huge. Yeah, he is. You see how wide he is? Massive. 565 pounds. He's he's the heaviest of all of them. Wow. He's 65 pounds heavier than the other ones, yet they've all grown up at the same time. And now look at his back though. Look at see he has a little bit of that lumpiness. Right. To a little his bit back. Of, but you know, this kind of pyramiding doesn't bother me. Like exactly. that's not that is not right. a, a, a pyramided a, animal. Exactly. That's not an issue of diet. Um, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, growth reasons, how much they eat. Um, but again, let's also discuss genetics. Yes. You know, sure. like you said, like you can right. have a guy that's, you know, we're all human beings, but some of us in the same family. Right. I got brothers that are taller and shorter and sisters that are, you know, it's just, there's a lot of variation. Right. right. So, you know. So here, he there it is. The same place, the same diet. He doesn't end up with the smooth shell. He ends up bigger, and he's a little bit, he's a little bit. Now, maybe whatever foods he picked out to eat, you know, may have made this little bit of difference. You know, we don't know. We haven't done enough of a scientific study on that. Right. You know, there's a, there's a, lot, of, uh, there's a lot of data that supports humidity for pyramiding. Yep. Yet, these they've raised are, up in Florida. These animals are raised up in the same yard. Yeah. So, there are individual differences in size and shell. Oh, look at this. Oh man, now there's a suction. <laughs> Come on, buddy. I tell you what, folks, why don't we see if we can get him out? We'll end on some nice shots of this guy enjoying a banana. We've disrupted his mud bath. They love to soak. You in the mood? You in the mood, bud? The other thing, the reason they soak in that mud is they rub that mud around. And what that does is it, it helps them with the mosquitoes. I, I've noticed that. That's awesome. You noticed it too. They rub it all over because mosquitoes can actually get in between the annuli on their scoots. Uh, right between the seams, they can get their proboscis through. And I've seen my sulcatas even do it. They take the mud and they flip it up on their backs. Yes. And that, that's kind of like an uh, uh, insect repellent for a tortoise. So there you have it. Oh, keep going, buddy. I don't want this to go in the mud. I'm really stretched here. Take your thumb and put it inside his mouth. Yeah, there you go. I'll inject it. Come on, man. Let me help you out. One more. <laughs> there you go, bud. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thanks so much to Sam for spending some time with us. Right. We have a Thanks, nice, folks. that's a nice Take long care. bonus video, man. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> we'll see you later. Take care.